mankind. So, thereby help conserve plant species from the brink of extinction. So, therefore, honeybees and their diversity conservation is necessitated in the recent years. So, interesting to note that uh, recently Karnataka State Government through Karnataka State Biodiversity Board, it has decided to make honeybee as a state insect after realizing its potential. <clears throat> this is very interesting thing to Karnataka people. So, before going to honeybees, let us know about uh, their origin and evolution briefly. Anibis have, it is believed that Anibis have diverged from Diptera. Diptera is again another group, major group in insecta class. So, two wings bearing a creature. Example, you may be knowing, housefly. And the lepidopterans, beautiful butterflies and moths, colored creatures, fast flying one. So, these are all. From these two stocks, the Anibis might have evolved since 300 million years ago. So, the Anibis are put under order Imenoptera, uh, where uh, almost all uh, insects, whatever we have in Imenoptera, so commercially known by many people, including agriculturists. The major groups of insects comes under Imenoptera are solitary bees, means they live alone without having any sociality. Subsocial means partially social some species, and uh, some species are social species. So we have solitary bees, subsocial bees, and social bees together in the Aminoptera. Of course, all these three are very important. And the bees, all bees are not going to be called honey bees. The bees which produce honey are called honey bees. I am focusing only on honey bees today. Let us know briefly about honey bee diversity. So around 20,000 bee species are known around the world. And those 20,000 bee species are placed under 425 genera, 22 subfamilies, and six families. And uh, among these, a few are very interesting to note, social bees, which belongs to family Epidae. It is one of the family in Imenoptera order. Epidae, there are three tribes. One is uh, Bombinae, tribe name. Example, bumblebees, you might be knowing. Epini, example, stingless bees, they does not have stings, non epi uh, sorry, the stinging, uh, uh, yeah, stinging bees, that is epi species, and meliponine, stingless bees, non epi species. So these three tribes phylogenetically related with each other and exhibiting certain few common features. So that's why these three species are commonly called bees or honeybees. So, epini consisting of only one small monophyletic genus, that is what we call uh, <clears throat> epis, and it is commonly called stinging bee. Meliponine consists of two principal genera, that is melipona and trigona or tetragonola, and these are all stingless bees. So, all these stinging epi species, stingless bees, that is melipona and trigona or tetragonola, species are commonly called eusocial species, means they live in colonies with the sister groups. This is what the systematic position of the anibis. So they belong to arthropoda like this. And this is uh, the family of the, uh, what we call uh, <clears throat> anibis where the worker, queen and the drone, three individuals will be there. And these are all morphologically different, but belongs to same species, hence they are called polymorphic individuals. Polymorphic individuals. And this is the colony. So let us know about the different species of apis. So around nine species are well known in the Asian continent. That is Epis laboriosa. Epis dorsata, Epis floria, Epis andriniformis, Epis mellifera, Epis sirana, Epis koshini covi, Epis nigrosincta, and Epis nullinensis. These are all native. Let us know, and uh, these Epis species further divided into three lineages based on the type of nest they construct. 
they are called cavity nesters and open nesters accordingly cavity nesting and bees open nesting and bees cavity nesting means this is how they construct in the wherever the crevices in the soil or in the tree trunk or in any buildings crevices where they construct uh, colony hence they are called cryptic species they don't want to exhibit outside openly okay cavity nester examples are apis nullininensis apis koshinikovi apis nigrosincta apis sirana apis mellifera so apis sirana apis mellifera you just remember in the next subsequent uh, uh, slides i am going to tell you much about these two species open nesters here they are divided into dwarf bees small bees and giant bees dwarf bees are small in size and examples are apis floria and apis andiniformis giant bees are apis laboriosa and apis dorsata and remember these two let us know about uh, what are the honeybee species found in india so india is uh, known for its rich biodiversity of honeybees we have about five species of which four are indigenous i mean to say born and brought up in india and another one is italian bee exotic species apis mellifera of course apis mellifera is dominating almost all throughout the nook and corner of indian subcontinent himalayan bee it is confining to himalayan region example apis laboriosa this is the one very giant big sized and bee rock bee or wild bee or giant bee apis dorsata and this is the apis dorsata you see the very uh, very vari variation in their morphology and size dwarf bee that is uh, red bee also called apis floria this is the apis floria and indian small bee it is indigenous bee this is the one apis sirana and italian bee this is the one apis mellifera these are all apis species whereas we have stingless bees they are very small in size trigona and melipona various species we have this is the representative of stingless bee okay so we have all these species in indian subcontinent okay so now let us know about the role of honey bees in pollination <clears throat> see pollination process uh, most of you are aware it is simply a process of transfer of pollen from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another or the same flower okay so you know very well pistil will be there pollen will be there and uh, bottom of the flower where nectar glands will be there and in the pollen pollen grains will be there so pollen grains and nectar these two are acts as a important resources for the honey bees so that is why honey bees are attracted by the flowers okay uh, so then before going to the role played by the honey bees in the process of pollination let us know about the different types of pollination briefly i am not going in detail so what is self pollination suppose if the bees are not involved or any other agents are not involved in the process of pollination what would have been happened so it is it leads to inbreeding you know very well what is inbreeding and what is the effects of inbreeding so you you cannot achieve the diversity so therefore cross pollination is very important to, to achieve wider gene pool and diversity so if there is a diversity in the ecosystem there will be a sustainability and the particular ecosystem will survive for a longer duration if it is no diversity it is if it is having a homogeneous type of plantation or what we call flora and fauna that particular ecosystem may not survive for a longer duration so therefore self pollination has got its own constraint in the ecosystem so therefore we need some agents where any bees acts like agents of pollination so cross pollination they do it is advantageous than the self pollination help to maintain wider gene pool so that we can achieve sustainability long standing ecosystem significant qualitative and quantitative changes one can notice if it is cross pollination happens by the pollinators especially any bees are considered as pollinators so you can expect very good returns that is economic importance biological characters of crop plant facilitate genetic enrichment hence pollination is essential for continual maintenance of crop diversity sustainable agriculture so country like india you take where the agriculturists are backbone to the indian nation 
So major economy comes from Indian agriculture. So therefore, sustainable agriculture is very important for our survival and sustainability. So therefore, some extent, NEPs are playing a very important role for these two things. So further, most plant species rely upon some kind of agents to accomplish the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a stamen to the stigma of a carpal, which are well known as pollinators. Means to say, though the certain plant species have the potential to perform cell pollination, but some plant species definitely they depend on other agents. So the biotic and abiotic agents we call, they are called pollinators or agents of pollination. They will be utilized or the service will be rendered by these particular plant species to achieve pollination and propagation. <clears throat> so pollinators nowadays are the highly valued resources considered around the world. There are about 2 lakh varieties of animal pollinators are known in the world. They are prized for their pollination service to several crops, most of which are interestingly insects. Among the insects, honeybees. So let us know about in Karnataka, what is the situation? In Karnataka, Karnataka hosts around 4,758 plant species, which belongs to 1,408 genera and 178 families. And this accounts for about 27% of the country's floral diversity of which most plant species have amazingly complex relationship with bees and other pollinators such as flies, beetles, moths, butterflies, birds and plants. Only few crops, example corn and wheat are pollinated by wind. 90 cultivated flowering crops rely on bees, very amazing to note. So among the pollinators, some are generalists, some are specialists, some are brawny, some are feeble, some have long tongues, some have short tongues, some work at colder temperatures, some at various kind of conditions. So therefore, because of the diversity with the pollinator, pollinators, we could achieve very good pollination and propagation among 90 cultivated flowering plants, which are grown at nook and corner of Indian subcontinent. Let us know about the types of pollination. We have abiotic pollination by abiotic factors, biotic pollination by living beings. So ombropyly, that is by rain, hydropyly by water, epidropyly, that is on the surface of the water, example, Neptunia species of plant, hypodropyly, it is underwater, example, ampupoly species. Means to say, you see how the specificity, how the different agents help to survive different kinds of plant species which are living in different inclement weather conditions or climatic regions. Animopoly, pollination by air, most of the compositive family members including wheat. Biotic pollination, it is by animals, mammalopoly, mammals, bats, example, ornithopoly, birds, entomopoly, insects, example, bees, moths, butterflies, flies and beetles. Sapromyophily, Example, stinking substances are secreted by the flowers, which are attracted by certain group of flies and midges. See, Anonaceae, Arachaceae, Aristolacaceae, Asilpidaceae, <coughs> Bruminaceae, Hydronaceae, Archidaceae, Raphinaceae, Raphilaceae, sorry, Stestulaceae, and all these plant species, I mean families which possess innumerable plant species depend on Sapromyopili, some extent, flies and midges. See the interesting thing about the insect and pollination, that is what we call entomopili. The honeybee, <clears throat> why it is doing pollination? Because it is getting the commonest reward, that is in the name of food called surplus amount of pollen and nectar. Nectar is rich with 25 to 27% of sugar content that is carbohydrate like glucose and fructose. It provides an energy source for the anibis. The pollen is providing a protein source, amino acid source to the anibis. So thereby, whatever requirements are there to lead a life, both protein and carbohydrate rich food will be getting by the flowers. So while collecting, anibis do pollination. So this is how the mechanism, when honeybees get into the flower, where with the help of its modified mouth parts, 
it will cut open the nectar glands and with the help of airy tongue it will suck the nectar while doing so because of airy body the pollen grains whatever are there when it alights on the flower all the pollen grains will stuck on to the hairs of the honeybee then when it go to another flower where the pollen grains are attracted or attached to the another flower stigma and pollination fertilization is going to happen this is how things are happening okay so diurnal pollinators we have nocturnal pollinators diurnal pollinators means to say both during night and day time pollination process is achieved i am not going to touch upon nocturnal pollination i will only tell about diurnal pollination where insects are major uh, uh, role they play among uh, all the insects you see here honey bees or the bees which are belonging to the order hymenoptera contributing 60% major share for the pollination process diptera lepidoptera thysanoptera coleoptera hemiptera these are all some extent minor importance so ants bees are major pollinators bees are consistent foragers this is what is required bees feed on nectar and pollen so it is not going to be wasted it is much utilized so therefore uh, you see here the list of crop plants depend on bees solitary bees like this see for example onion pigeon pea cajun pea congo bean likewise pepper coconut cucumber carrot mango guava tomato see both to the horticultural plants vegetable plants agricultural plants commercial plants or depending on any bees for their pollination process and even oil seeds pulses vegetable crops fruit yielding plants these are all fruit fruit yielding plants like almond apple apricot citrus cherry so on so forth fiber crops example cotton it is one of the commercial plant spices and condiments clove cardamom coriander likewise beverages coffee tea cocoa fodder crops like bersim alfalfa these are all depending on any bees so in the new york times they have published the percent dependence of any bees on different plants or vice versa the different plant species depending on any bees you see here almonds 100% they depend on any bees for their pollination process likewise apples more than 90% blueberries cultivated plant 90% see this is how any bees playing a very important role in the process of pollination of commercial agricultural vegetable crops this is what you can see the different flowering plants whereby bees are doing their pollination service and propagation and help for improving the economic traits of all these fruit yielding plants okay plum tree apricot apricot fruit peach fruit strawberry raspberry plant lychee plant pear plant cherry fruit almond even sunflower you see there are reports published reports when any bees are pollinated and uh, uh, the uh, sunflower plant <clears throat> where the seed set up oil content of the seed size of the seed grain the tall improved a lot one and a half time so the farmer could get to one and a half time yield so when the seed set and seed content and everything is good definitely it fetches to a high price in the market likewise rape seed sesame seeds even mustard seeds in india soil nesting bees are there soil nesting they construct nest in the soil <clears throat> they are andrini illirida and andrini lena these are the two species important pollinators of the oil seeds in especially northern india sayag in 1983 has reported research and published a paper and even uh, the cowpea pulses soybean and field bean these are all are also pollinated by any bees black gram red gram onion every day we are using see one and a half time if pollinated by any bee yield is enhanced garlic also likewise uh, fodder crops cotton commercial crops nutmeg clove 
pepper, coriander, and cardamom. See, cardamom provides very good amount of nectar to the enemies. And accordingly, the seed set, everything is very good. So likewise, coffee, beverage plants, cocoa, and tea. And even like this, uh, they help in the process of pollination and propagation of so many plant species. Not only in India and other parts of the globe. So, the pollinators role provide free ecosystem service. They never expect anything from the farmer or anything from the ecosystem. So, they are friendly to the ecosystem. Ecosystem service in the form of cross-pollination. They help propagate several plant species both in natural, that is, forest in the wild, man-made crop plants, and maintaining biological diversity, boost crop productivity in different ecosystems. So hence, uh, the enhance the productivity level of agriculture, agricultural crops, horticultural crops, ornamental crops, fodder crops, helps in the conservation of several plant species from extinction. Hence, we should raise our voice concern to conserve pollinators and they become part of biodiversity conservation efforts <clears throat> throughout the globe. Now, in America and other Western countries, where scientists and farmers are looking into the pollinators, especially the honeybees and, uh, conserve, and their conservation aspects in the name of biodiversity conservation efforts. So, the advantages of insect pollination in general, honeybee pollination in particular, or you can get a well-pollinated crop, uniform seed set, well-filled seeds, well-developed and shaped fruits, Insect pollination results in higher fields as well as higher quality crops. So 27% enhancement has been noticed in sunflower, that is with respect to its soil content. Onion crop, 50 to 70% higher yield in onion seed if bees are pollinated. Then what else we require? So honeybees, very important agents of pollination. So now I am getting into the another segment of my talk. That is uh, role in beekeeping and apiculture. <clears throat> so beekeeping and apiculture, of course, uh, not one and the same, slight difference. Beekeeping means keeping bees or rearing bees for any production, whether it is a stinging bee or stingless bee. That is epi species or non epi species. Whereas Apiculture, the term prefix epi, culture, itself indicates epi means it is confining to only epi species. Okay, here stingless bees are not going to be included in this culture. Of course, for stingless bees, another industry is there, that is what we call meli, meli pony culture. It is very common in Kerala, meli pony culture, where only stingless bees are used. But in Karnataka, in Kodogu and some other parts of Belgaum district, where the Western Ghats area, in the Western Ghats area, where people are doing a little extent meliponic culture, but commercially meliponic culture, particularly stingless bees are not harvested or are nested greater extent for production of honey. Whereas apiculture, we are doing it very well and in the name of beekeeping. So it is one of the best interdisciplinary subject of immense pure and applied value. Why it is so? Because basic and applied and advanced aspects you can look into the looking in the apiculture field. Therefore, interdisciplinary. It embraces all amazing, spectacular, beautiful, and mysterious myriad ways of life. You can you will come to know later in the subsequent slides. <clears throat> it deals with both wild and domesticated enemies. So we can employ, we can culture wild bees and domesticated bees in the name of beekeeping or apiculture. Few reasons for doing apiculture. Why we should do apiculture? <clears throat> Excellent reasons for apiculture. Any bees pollinate cultivated crops, already known, wild plants. Apiculture generates income. Many people are full-time or part-time basis, they do apicultural activity and they get money periodically. High products are useful to mankind. Apiculture is possible with few resources. You need not to invest more money. You need not, you don't want any, I mean, you need not to have big infrastructure. 
Apiculture does not require specific land. Anywhere you can do. Wherever crop plants or flowering plants are grown. Nectar and pollen and other sources are easily available throughout the year. Every plant one on the other way blooming and providing nectar and pollen source to the NEPs. So therefore throughout the year one can do beekeeping. Apiculture is an eco-friendly activity. It is not creating any, neither creating or nor disturbing any plants or ecosystem. All age groups can do this activity. I mean, any person, small boy to an age old person can involve in this activity, provided one should uh, undergo training. It provides employment opportunity to millions of people in the society. It is true also as far as Karnataka is concerned and India in general. We can earn foreign exchange because honey is one of the international commodity. Along with honey, so many other high products, we are using it as a raw material for manufacturing of so many things. Example, cosmetic items and uh, other paint and varnishes and other leather industry, even food industry and all that I will tell you a little later. So therefore, for this region, we, we should do apiculture. Brief history, <clears throat> in 1851, Reverend L.L. Longstore discovered the movable frame eye. So beekeeping first came into Bengal in India in 1882, 1907 initiated at IARI, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, Osa, New Delhi. And in 1911, Reverend Newton started beekeeping in South India. In 1928, Royal Commission on Agriculture considered this activity as cottage Sorry, cottage, C O T T G cottage industry. In 1936, Swami Shambhavananda of Ramakrishna Mission initiated beekeeping in Kurk, Karnataka. So from this onwards, throat, nook and corner of Karnataka, beekeeping activity was initiated. In 1962, Union Government of India established C B R T I Central Bee Research and Training Institute at Pune. So this is brief, important milestones achieved or recorded in the development origin of beekeeping activity in India. Honeybees are very friendly, eco-friendly, what I said previously, and they can share different trophic levels without any competition, different species of honeybees. So here I have made a mention about uh, trophic level 1, trophic level 2, trophic level 3. Uh, in the research activity, in the project, we have created this particular image. See, they are living uh, in the trophic level, that is arboreal conditions, even in the higher elevation, big buildings, tall buildings, Epis dorsata species, wild bee, Epis floria small bee, that is called a dwarf bee, prefers uh, lower elevation, it can be called a trophic level 2. And the stingless bees will not uh, construct a higher elevation, their nest. They will prefer ground level elevation, trigona, melipona, tropical level 3. So, means to say, the honeybees without competition, different species of honeybees without competition, they can survive at different trophic levels and you can harness their potential service both for pollination as well as producing high products like honey. So, let us know about what is beekeeping. <clears throat> Before going to start beekeeping, first let us know about what the queen and drone are going to do. So in the air, they do mating. Queen, that is a potential female. The drone, it is called king, male, fertile male. So the queen will offer more than six to eight males, one after the other, mating in the air. That is what we call nuptial flight or nuptial flight. It is called honeymoon type mating in the hair. So the queen will mate continuously one after the other six to eight males and collect sufficient quantity of sperms by the drones. So when once the male is mated by the queen or mating with the queen, it is end of its life. The drone will die. Okay. So next after collecting sufficient amount of sperms, after fertilization, the female starts laying eggs in hexagonal shaped cell. Okay. So the workers will, I will tell you the work of this particular agent. Worker will take care about the developing larvae and pupa and adult. So the queen will live for about two to three years in the nature. 
she keeps on laying eggs and it is she is called in the entomological term egg laying machine her duty is only to lay eggs that's all and uh, remember she will not go oftenly for mating with drone oftenly that is why when she emerged okay the fertile female will mate 6 to 8 worker i mean drones that is uh, male and collect uh, to preserve lifetime what is whatever the amount of sperms are required to fertilize her eggs she is the busiest in the summer months and i will need to be uh, uh, at uh, its maximum strength and lay 2300 eggs per day see the potential of uh, or uh, this one uh, egg laying capacity <clears throat> this is how she got shaped egg she lay in the center of the colony that is a hexagonal shaped cell and these are all larva and the larva transform into pupa pupa into adult hence the anibi is called volo metabolism insect where four stages are there see the, you can see the life cycle duration queen requires 16 days to become from the egg to adult worker requires 21 days and drone become 24 days from egg to adult so drone is the lethargic individual in the colony queen is the potential egg laying machine and worker perform so many tasks hence the name called worker so this is how one should collect the swarm from the nature okay a swarm is with one queen so many drones and thousands of workers it is a small uh, swarm and staying at the stock over site before starting and establishing the colony in the wild and usually the bee keepers will go to the forest and collect this kind of swarm during breeding season especially during spring season okay nowadays commercially available people commercially the queen and the swarm will be produced in the commercial form apiary where by paying some amount you can collect throughout the year a swarm with one queen many drones and thousands of workers <clears throat> why they sit as a i mean on the stop over site so it is one of the important uh, place to decide all these things so anibis in the wild or else even in the domesticated human captive condition they look into available ecological factors congenial factors congenial site for nesting availability of water source because anibi colony means it is indicators of water source wherever anibi colonies are there nearby water source one can expect good navigation path because anibis are busiest individuals in the colony they have to go come out of the colony getting into the colony frequently so therefore the navigation path the flight path should be good floral abundance good amount of flora should be there flowering plants poor accessibility to mankind they don't expect so much disturbance from the human being and poor accessibility to the any predators and enemies so when they sit like this before initiate the establishment of the colony to produce honey establish colony they will look into all these factors that is in the stock over site that is what we call swarm you can see swarm so in the during the spring season migration will be there many bees will migrate and sit one place and the next day the anibi colony will not be there so they will go into some other places this is what we call swarm so they are seeking all these factors hence selection of site for the construction of nest or colony is habitat specific it is dependent on flora water and safe ecological conditions so anibis very intelligent creatures compared to human being more than human being i can say and they adopt elite strategies to exploit available floral source wherever they go and construct nest and to achieve inclusive fitness of cooperative defense means to say the three individuals are there drone worker and queen they should live together and have a very good cooperative uh, among the individuals so as to defend their colony defend their uh, the nest mates and uh, to survive well that is in the ecosystem safe survival so most of the time after attaining this the queen start or gives green signal to the workers to establish colony like this okay <clears throat> so uh, then uh, the worker bees are 
directed by the queen because queen acts like a regulator controller she is a leader of the colony because it is female dominated society insects social insects are female usually female dominated society so queen is a leader she will direct to the bee, uh, i mean to say the workers few workers will be keep on producing bees wax see remember that's what i said any bees are eco friendly they never collect any raw material from the ecosystem so they produce they have wax glands in the abdomen third fourth fifth and sixth in the ventral region you can see the wax flakes white flakes this wax flakes are produced by the worker bees uh, these are like a blocks or uh, like your uh, bricks and uh, to produce a single wax flake or else one pound of bees wax they should consume 68 pounds of honey it is a highly energetic process they need a large amount of honey so some um, uh, number of few number of workers are uh, i mean directed by the queen to produce wax continuously to establish vertically horizontally the colony so wax is very much required for construction of bees wax comb hi it is called okay so this is how hexagonal shaped colony cells are constructed okay and uh, computer model has generated it looks like a three dimensional geometry so like a honeycomb cell looks like this hexagonal tube terminating in three equal rhomboses that meet a point on the axis of the cell you can see here and the center that is one like this like this one two three on which the single cell is located so this is how both the sides without leaving any space much <clears throat> effectively the colony with the help of wax flakes construct in this way so one side another side you see it is a bilayered vertical sheet yanks downwardly that is what we call two opposing honeycomb layers with the brood developing brood three dimensional geometry of a honeycomb cell okay so this is how after producing wax the wax is used for construction of the cell and uh, the workers will establish a foundation layout to construct any comb cells like this okay this is how vertically they start constructing any comb so this is how they do and very interestingly the worker bees have marker pheromones with the help of nasnop glands they have in their body and these glands produce what we call octyle acetate marker pheromone and this pheromone helps for identification location of the nest you see here white white patches these are all signatures of the anibi so this signature is with acetyl octyl acetate chemical substance it is a pheromone ecto hormone and it helps for making food sources marking the hive marking food sources scenting prospective hive locations by scouts and other bees and gathering the swarm flights so these are all interesting activities any bees perform during colony establishment and propolis this is another substance it is a waste exudate by produced by the plants certain plants so that is used as a bee glue it acts like a cementing substance used to uh, wherever crevices are there in this particular while constructing the colony and uh, the if any tear and wear are there that will be used as a sealing material this propolis it is chemically composed of 50% resin 30% wax and 10% essential oils okay this is used as a sealant see this is how you one in the uh, comb hive where you can see this particular propolis <clears throat> so this is how they construct and usually the comb in the comb queen cell looks like a dome shape like a dome shape and uh, remaining cells are hexagonal in shape so this is how on the exterior portion of the colony comb i mean i mean the queen cell is constructed the reason is whenever any disturbance or any enemies or predators are attacked to the colony so the queen should go out immediately if she is inside the colony she will be trapped by the predators or she will be killed by the other insects or predators so therefore 
it is a strategy what i said delight strategy at least queen if she go out she can lay x and she can establish one more colony later so that is the purpose that is the reason the uh, what we call uh, uh, dome shaped uh, cells are constructed on the peripheral portion of the colony so any bees require flight path for navigation because they go and out of the colony and come into the colony while collecting pollen and nectar there should not be any disturbance and this is what vertical comb they construct wild bee it is example apis dorsata gain any bee so it is on the tree it is on the human built structures and this is how you can see on the rocky surface this is what the schematic representation of the comb where uh, see the peripheral portion where worker cell I mean, queen cell will be there and just above this uh, in this portion queen cell will be there and above that there will be brood chamber you can see here the eggs and the developing embryo will be there and above that pollen will be preserved pollen and here on the top honey will be stored so this is how it is present okay so <clears throat> now about uh, beekeeping so the modern agents of beekeeping are apis mellifera and apis sirana indica in india in india because these two are domesticated species you can commercially exploit for a longer duration apis mellifera is a exotic species it is from italy and apis sirana indica is indigenous species it is small bee both are employed in the beekeeping activity hence these two are considered as modern beekeeping agents even in the name of melipona culture where melipona has 40 species trigona tetragonella and melipona and in the name of melipona culture <clears throat> where stingless bees are reared and honey is produced so these are all uh, especially the apiculture or modern bee keeping where the implements are used bee keeping implements like this so very simple whatever is going on in the nature this as simulating exactly under human captive condition by providing movable frame i that is what we call modern bee keeping movable frame i what is movable frame you see this is what white colony and inside same thing is provided and so allowed to culture or grow the honey bees so this is what the swarm can be collected like this and the bee box can be used and this is what the queen cell can be collected with the help of queen cage without harming or disturbing plastic devices are available nowadays queen protector queen cap and the beekeeping method we have indigenous method and exotic method or modern method so where we can use like this you see it is a movable frame bottom board is there on which you have to place a floor board then you have to provide entrance for entry and exit of any bee and the remaining port you should to close and this is hive body is rectangular shape hive body where inside you have to keep the frames like this one two you can keep and three you can keep on the top you have to cover the crown or board to avoid direct entry of sunlight and direct fall of rain water so this is how so many uh, designs and models have been developed by throughout the world by different apiculturists so you can see here only in one this corner on this side and bees are getting in and coming out and remaining thing is totally closed so these are all things and, uh, and this is what uh, uh, wax sheet so synthetic wax sheet can be provided as a lay foundation sheet so on which cells are constructed by the bee so ready made foundation sheet is available this is uh, the foundation sheet machine okay you can provide in the artificial bee keeping activity so this is what i said rectangular shaped b box both the side it is open upper and i mean on top and down and the remaining uh, uh, corner four corners are closed where the frames are placed by, just by leaving small space that is what we call b space b space means to say the b whatever space is required for easy movement inside the colony like this top to bottom and right to left throughout the Uh, box so that is what we call by leaving space around 10 or 8 depending upon the size uh, frames are placed these are all the rectangular shaped frames little bit rectangular called hive frames so 
with the help of this foundation sheet if you you can tag like this so that bees will start completely filling and constructing the colony and depositing honey this is how the frames pollen trap artificially you can provide you can provide feeder sugar solution during uh, non floral flowering season and you can see use smoker to check and inspect the honey bees in the colony and bee brush clean the bee you should wear like this protective clothing because it is a stinging honey bee it stings sometimes so to avoid stinging you should wear a protective device and this is how and this is how you can inspect now and then every day regular monitoring should be there and you should use eye boot and bee gloves and all and you can wear the helmet like thing to protect you from our the individual from the bee sting and uh, uncapping knife and wire embedder these are all the different instruments used wax melter and division board labor you have to provide sugar solution 1 is to 1 that is 1 kg sugar 1 1 liter of water you can provide so that uh, during uh, non floral period uh, dearth period uh, you can provide the sugar solution as a artificial diet frame lifter and scraper and honey extractor after complete uh, uh, bee keeping so the frame should be collected and put inside this particular drum honey extractor and you have to rotate this particular rotor so that due to gravitational force without damaging the comb honey will come out okay so that honey to be collected here honey collecting tap so <clears throat> this is what bee keeping so i will take another few more minutes uh, to tell uh, interesting things foraging activity it is one of the skilled engineering technique exhibited by anibis so anibis have 170 odorant receptors compared with only 62 in fruit flies 79 in mosquitoes see 170 odorant that is why they can visit so many types of flowers and achieve pollination or perform pollination and propagate different species of flowering plants so therefore helps in the process of diversity maintenance why all these 170 odor and receptors helped in so many activity kin recognition signals social communication odor recognition of finding food sense of smell is so precise that it could differentiate hundreds of different floral varieties and tell whether a flower carried pollen or nectar from distance it is nearest or away <clears throat> very interesting so these are all the important materials honey bee collect nectar pollen water minerals and propolis collection so by collecting all these nothing going wrong with the environment nothing disturbances would be created in the among the plants in the environment okay and this is a nectar it is sugar rich liquid okay and pollen contains 22.7% protein and 10.4% essential amino acids carbohydrates and all will be there and see the foraging activity so it is a age polytheism age specific related that is what we call division of labor this is how anibis go and do perform two dances that is what we call round dance in front of the colony whereby they direct to the colony mates tells about what is the distance of the flora what is the abundance and what is the quantity that all they will convey and even uh, another dance is waggle dance so this is what so both waggle and round dance they perform so carl ritter von frisch nobel prize got because it is called b language or anibi language he discovered very first so they carry pollen grain like this you might have seen you just go and visit any i mean the flower sometimes anibi will come with this particular type of load it is nothing but a pollen deposited on the hind limb pollen basket in the pollen basket division and dignity of labor see the cleaning of cells it means to say in hive activity and hive out activity what we call so from the emergence after emergence so the emerged newly emerged bee will not be allowed to go out of the colony she will be worker will be allowed to clean the cells and allowed to feed the larvae and allowed to feed the nest mates and feed the queen <clears throat> and packing the pollen inside the colony and maintain the temperature they collect water and maintain the temperature during high temperature conditions and collect the water and nectar so this is what they do during young age when they attain 22 or 25 days maturity they will be going out and collect food 
so they will collect they will uh, i mean to say fly 6 miles as fast as 15 miles per hour they collect to make 90000 miles to make 1 pound of honey one twelfth of a tea spoonful of honey is produced by single honey bee in its lifetime and it takes about 556 workers to gather one pound of honey from 2 million flowers a honey bee visit 50 to 100 flowers during single trip honey making this is how it is very interesting thing honey stored cells inspection they do some honey bees and this is how they collect and store nectar and some bees will be keep on fanning uh, the comb so that whatever moisture content is there usually 80% moisture will be there in the nectar so it will bring down to the 18 to 20% so when it becomes nectar becomes 18 to 20% moisture it becomes ripened honey then when they attain right ripened status then they start covering the cap this is called matured honey what we call it is immature honey if you go and harvest honey during this particular phase honey bees are very aggressive so when you go during this particular period they will not uh, i mean to say i mean they are not aggressive so much and uh, you they allow to harvest honey from the column so they do cleaning repairing activity this is how with the help of propolis that is sealant there and where that all do and they also show defense mechanism that is ovipositor is modified as a stinging organ they protect the nest mates by its stinging and this is how they sting and release venom into the victim <clears throat> so it is estimated that 1100 honey bee stings are required to be fatal to human being management of bee keeping seasonal management pest and predators management pathogen management these are all required this is another thing migratory bee keeping in north india it is very famous many people are becoming millionaires by just collecting naturally available flower and its nectar and pollen and by doing bee keeping collect any and sell it to international market <clears throat> economic analysis of course a single bee colony by using 100 bee colonies you can get 73467 rupees per one and a half months to two months high products this is what honey bees wax royal jelly propolis venom these are all high products you see honey is considered as one of the uh, i mean to say balanced diet even a small newly born baby to the person who is on the death bed if you provide it is to be digested so this is why because of all these constituents <clears throat> bees wax it is used for manufacturing cosmetics face cream paints ointments carbon paper etc etc and it has got very good food value and the royal jelly it is used to enhance sterile uh, virility and it becomes ingredient in various cosmetics and lotions propolis is also used in various ayurvedic medicine and other even uh, to treat viral influenza and lung tuberculosis throat infection remedy for burns and wounds pollen is used as a food with honey can be used for the treatment of hypertension and other complaints of nervous and endocrine systems it improves appetite lower blood pressure and effective against anemia so it is available in the market bee venom bee therapy nowadays epi therapy is common instead of allopathy where people are going for acting it is almost like a acupuncture therapy where people are using live bees and hive products to treat different diseases including cancer even migraine okay and eye related diseases circulatory system related diseases so these are all the products like because any venom contains phospholipids hyaluronidase apamine melitin mcd peptide histamine small peptides these are all the important proteinaceous materials used this and any venom powder is available in the market apiculture relief rub is available vinoflex rub is available and this is how people are getting migraine and other treatment you know sting therapy or epi therapy using all these products so value added products in the beverage industry even the food industry where any is used to enhance the product value in the bakery any cake is available any biscuits are available so conclusion in recent years in depth discussions are held on bee pollinators especially in western countries including in india also nowadays so it is time to think about the bee pollinators in india 
updating the knowledge on any species and their use is necessitated so as to restore local biodiversity produce quality food grains and in turn we have pollution free environment this is very much required at this juncture everybody is crying for this pollution free environment <clears throat> for safe human survival so therefore it is high time to say that it is everyone's responsibility to conserve the existing anibi species in their preferred habitats provided we can use them under human captive condition without harming their diversity we can produce high uh, products for human advantage and harm for exchange see albert einstein one of the renowned scientist physicist he was realized the importance of bee during his time he stated that if the bee disappears from the surface of the earth man would have no more than 4 years to live no more bees no more pollination no more pollination no more men so finally to conclude any bee help us learn following facts cooperation division and dignity of labor industriousness food sharing family planning social living cleanliness defense sacrifice that is altruism and discipline these are the references so i am profusely thank the coordinator dr one of my best friend dr k namrudesh professor coordinator for present refresher course in life sciences for the opportunity to share my views i thank the organizers in general academic staff college director and office bearers i thank all the participants who have listened this talk and also i am thankful to the university of mysore for encouragement thank you <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, if you have any questions, please, please. Sir, I have some. I need some clarification, sir. Please, please. Sir, myself from uh, myself, Dr. Modi from Gulbarga, sir. Yes. Botany. Yes. Sir, actually, what is the aim? Ultimate aim of honeybees. Hmm. Uh, even though they are preparing the honeybee and everything, and when they leave the uh, that structure or the comb. Hmm. Sir, sir, the main aim of honeybee is the main aim of honeybee is how we survive, live, and for our future generation. For that reason only they are surviving. But we, the man, we are human beings. We are very crazy about harvesting natural resources for our advantage. Honeybees are not constructing any comb for helping human being. they want to use the tani for their future generation and the gen number of generations to produce but we after realizing the importance and quality and uh, food uh, that is why we are going and distributing any bees the, the when the leaf actually we can the the comb sir that structure yeah see see if it is undisturbed place they will be remain for years together when there is a flora and water source availability is good if there is a disturbance if there is a non availability of water and flora they start migrating to some other place but it, it is not same with the honey bee practices keep honey keeping practices yeah because you know in honey bee bee keeping activity what people will do they will provide some food, artificial food some that is why that is why they will not go away even sometimes so in uh, mallad area people uh, you have experienced some of the time even in the captive condition they will migrate the colony will be completely empty without any any bees even sometimes this may happen yes thank you sir thank you thank you uh, this is kumar from vhs in college virudhunga tamil nadu sir i have one question regarding that uh, sting therapy yes sir what are the diseases can be uh, cured uh, through the sting therapy sir what yes. i said already that is migraine is one cancer yes. therapy cancer therapy even no uh, cardiac related problems hypertension cancer therapy cancer therapy is completely cure the cancer cell or it may be suppress the 
uh, activity or growth of the, the particular suppress cancer cells. Suppress the activity of uh, what we call proliferation of the cancer cells. But nowadays, uh, most of the people are prepared to chemotherapy to suppress the uh, further development of the cancer cells. Sir, so that is there, sir. That is there. It is hand in hand. It goes allopathy, Ayurveda, homeopathy. That what you are seeing in the present uh, society. Okay. It is one side. It is there. People who are interested, they can go for this type of thing. People who are not interested, they have more money and they want immediate cure. They go for chemotherapy. Of course, side okay. effects are there. Whereas in okay. case of Sting therapy or uh, epitherapy, no side effects. So, suppose if you have any data regarding that uh, sting therapy, uh, anybody is cured through this? Definitely, sir. Therapy. You can get uh, um, so many re published research papers. You go to website and simply type epitherapy, you can get a lot of papers. Even in China and uh, what we call southeastern countries, Thailand, China, uh -huh. and even uh, other uh, North India, northeastern uh, states where Epitherapy clinics are going on. People are uh, going for epitherapy instead of allopathy clinics. Oh, at what stage is that kind of the sting therapy is uh, better to the cancer affected person, sir? Sir, uh, stage, second it stage, all stage, depends stage, upon the state of the cancer. Stage, oh, stage of the cancer. Whether it oh, is in preliminary stage, advanced stage, middle stage, like that, that all you should consult and you get uh, some advice, then you should go for, decide for going to this type of uh, okay. therapy. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, I have one doubt. Uh, please, actually, there is a belief in the villages. Uh, introduce yourself, sir. Please. Uh, I am Dr. Niranjan from Pump University, sir. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, there is a belief in the villages. Suppose if you harvest the honey in the full moon day. Yes, sir. The availability of honey in that uh, uh, hive will be a less. Yeah. And it is in a, uh, uh, like uh, in Amos and other during the time, it will be a more. Yeah. Is it true, sir? Sir, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, because since 15 years I am involved with uh, apicultural uh, beekeeping studies, research. So, it is just a superstitious belief, sir. Even uh, the published reports, evidences are not available. But uh, what we suspect in the full moon day, see what I said, the nocturnal pollination and the diurnal pollination, I said, some of the animals during night time active because of moonlight. So some uh, predatory animals, enemies may go and disturb the enemies. So what they do when the disturbance is there, they will drink all the honey and go away immediately. Okay. Whereas during uh, new moon time, there is no dark and I mean, uh, light and poor light visibility, not encourage many predators and other insects or even some moths or some other animals to go because I, uh, I would like to provide you one more very interesting information. One species is their wax moth. This wax moth is a nocturnal species. It will lay eggs in the anibic colony. <clears throat> so when it gets into the anibic colony, disturbance, disturbance will be there. As a result, uh, the anibis will start going away after drinking complete honey. So this might be the reason, but uh, very critical in-depth research and its publications are not available as of my yes, knowledge. Sir, in uh, our childhood also, suppose if you harvest, uh, we are hard also, it is not the good time to harvest. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. But it is personal it. experience, sir, that's what I shared. Thank yeah, you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, good, good morning, sir. I'm Dr. Anita from uh, Food Science and Nutrition Department, KSOU. Uh, sir, I just state as a general question.